Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop and I'm going all the way to heaven. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. Well, welcome to Texas. Welcome to our new show on the road to freedom. Uh, as you know, the word says that whom the sun has set free is free indeed, and that's where we're going, and we want to take you with us. Come on, this is Christy Lefevre. I'm Mylon Lefevre, and, and uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of fun studying the word this year with you. My job as a minister of the gospel is I'm a teacher. And I travel around, I go where I'm invited because I used to be a musician. So lots of times I get invited places because of my music ministry. But I'm a teacher and my job is to make the Word of God simple and easy to understand. So today I'm going to submit some holy information is what I call it. It's revelation. And, uh, and once you understand the Word of God, the better you understand it, the easier it is to make wise decisions. And when you get your mind renewed, and that's what it means to study the Word of God, to learn how to think like God, when you get your mind renewed and you get the wisdom of God in the mind of Christ, you will make better choices, and that will raise the quality of your life. And because God is love and He loves you, He wants to raise the quality of your life. So, man, we're excited. We're thankful yes, we are. that you've allowed us into your home today. I say it this way, everywhere I go, I believe God's people ought to have more fun than anybody else. I think it's a no-brainer if you're going to heaven, you ought to be in a better mood than if you're going to hell, right? <laughs> Come on, we're going to have a good time today. That's right. Today's message is about the goodness of God. I was, I was reading a, um, a magazine article by Gloria Copeland one time, who's my mother in the faith, and she was explaining that the goodness of God, and I, I needed this. I mean, this was only about eight, nine years ago. And, and you know, I'm not a spring chicken, so I had gone a long time without this revelation. She said, the goodness of God is the foundation for faith. If God's not good, how could you trust him? If he's, not, if he's only good sometimes, and while you're trying to believe him, you know, the Bible says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. While you're trying to live by faith, if God would jerk the rug out from under you, then you could never trust Him. The good news is there's over 7,000 promises in the Word of God, and they're all, according to the Bible, yes and amen. God does those 7,000 things for That's whoever right. believes Him, That's right. whoever believes Him enough to say so, because... You know, you can't be ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. If you want to release that power in your life, you got to say what you believe. And then you got to expect it to happen. And that's what faith is. So this is so important too. When you hear the word of God in these shows each week, Hebrews 4, 2 says, in order for the word that you're hearing to profit or to benefit your life, then you must join your faith with the word that you hear. So I encourage you right now to get ready to join your faith with the word. Never man's opinion because our opinion will not change your life, right. but the truth of God's word will. Yes. So we always join our faith with the word that we hear. So get ready, I'm ready, how about you? Yeah. <laughs> Psalm 27 and verse 13 
King David said this, and King David was a cool guy, you know, he's a king, but he was also, according to the Bible, he was a man after God's own heart. I read the whole Bible many times. That's the only guy God said that about. Yeah. And I studied David's life and thought, wow, how did he get to be a man after God's heart? Here's what he said in Psalm 27, 13. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. There were times when he would have been so depressed, so discouraged, so afraid that had he not expected, that's what faith is, he expected to see the goodness of God. When armies came against Israel, there were three of them. There were all three, each one bigger than Israel's army. That's the day that David wrote this. I would have expected to die today had I not expected to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. You know you're going to get tested. Life is not always easy. Sometimes it's hard. But if you keep believing God, you get through the hard stuff. When you pass those tests, I mean, anybody that remembers school knows that, you know, at the end of the semester, they give you a lot of information. And then there's a test. And if you pass that test, you get to go to the next grade. You get promoted. If you don't pass that test, you're in the third grade again next year. And next year. And next year. And you can change schools and you can blame it on the teacher and, and having a bad day, but you're still in the third grade until you pass this test. Now, when we pass these tests, God can trust us with more. When tests come along and we keep believing God no matter what, that's when the good life becomes available. Verse 14 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. There'll be times when it's taken a while. Some tests in my life have taken a lot of years. I look back on them. I could have passed them sooner, but I didn't. I failed the test a bunch of times and had to keep taking it over and over. Anyway, waiting for the Lord is a wise thing to do. Don't ever give up. Amen. Deuteronomy 28, 1 in Amplified. I love this. It's sort of long, but let me share something with you. It says, if you listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you heed the voice of the Lord your God. In other words, when you hear the word of God and you read it, or your pastor teaches it to you, or you hear it on TV like today, yeah, if you great. allow it to change the way you live. Mm. Every day I know that there are a lot of problems in the earth because sin is in the earth. And so people sin and it creates chaos for those around them and for themselves. And in order for me to function in a place of victory in this earth, I need to constantly be corrected and instructed by the Lord. Yeah, so amen. I read his word every day. I like it yeah, when God talks too. to me. Me too. I like That's it when best. my pastor, uh, George Pearson, talks to me and, and Brother Copeland and the folks that, that I listen to on a regular basis. I appreciate the fact that they've been walking with the Lord longer than I have and they know him better than I do and they can help me to understand things. It's really cool that I can read a book that maybe Brother Hagen wrote 40 years ago and find out something in five minutes that it took him five years to learn and saved me five years of, of struggle in that situation. But you know, that's what Proverbs 19:20 says. Yeah. If we'll hear counsel and receive instruction and even accept correction, then we will be wise in the time to come. So that's key. That's or key. we can get offended when correction comes. Right. Who do you think you are telling me what to do? My pastor is the answer. Yeah. The guy who needs to tell me, who, who God chose and put into my life to help me to be like Jesus. Right. I need correction. Yeah, I should do. not be offended yes. as somebody else knows God better than I do. There's lots of folks who do, mm -hmm. and I'm listening to all of them I can find. Amen. Verse nine says, the Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you. This is amplified. It's a little longer, but man, it's so good. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth, verse 10 says, will see that you're called by the name and in the presence of the Lord, and they'll be afraid of you. They won't mess with you because they'll see you're anointed, and they'll see you're the righteous are as bold as a lion. They'll see you walking with God. 
and they won't mess with you. Verse 11 says, And the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body, of your livestock, and of your ground, and the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. And the Lord will open up to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain of your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you'll be above only and you shall not be beneath if you just heed God's word, the commandments of the Lord your God, and be watchful to do them. Now, here's the good news about that. That was a long one. But here's the great news. Over in Deuteronomy 30, 19, it says this. You get to choose. A lot of people think God is in control and he chooses everything. Look, God can take control if he wants to. He's God. But he's not in control. He gave you a free will and he will not violate your will. If God was totally in control, there wouldn't be anybody drunk today. Everybody would have been in church last Sunday. There'd be nobody in prison. Nobody would rob any banks this week. If God was in control, but he's given you a choice. You can go to heaven if you want to, or you can go to hell if you really want to. It's not the will of God. People say, well, it must be God's will that these things happen. No, it, it, the Bible says if, if God got his will, his will is that none should perish and all should have everlasting life. That means everybody on earth would be a Christian. Mm -hmm. And everybody on earth would trust the Lord Jesus as their savior and master and king. And everybody on earth would be reading the Bible every day and trying to grow up and treat each other right and really bless each other. Mm -hmm. It says here in Deuteronomy 30, 19, it says, I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you that I've set before you life and death and the blessings and the curses. Therefore, choose life. Notice this is your choice that you and your descendants may live. Well, hey, Team Mylan. I just want to remind you about our Church on the Run daily digital devotionals. And those are a scripture or two for the day that we have filmed on location in beautiful places all over the planet like Yosemite Falls, the Grand Canyon, the mountaintop in Banff, Canada, the beach in Maui, lots of beautiful places. And you can take that scripture for the day and meditate on it. We believe, according to Proverbs, that it will be a right word at the right moment, and it'll be good to you when you hear it. But you know, you don't have to take my word for it. Let me tell you what others are saying about Church on the Run. We got this report from Suzette, and she says, thank you for the ministry God has placed you in and for the word you speak. I personally am old in this walk, but found myself in a dark place of no growth. Your short sermons hit home, and I am greatly encouraged. Praise God, Suzette, that's a good report. We also heard from Jake, and he said, woohoo. I like that, I say that all the time. Woohoo, this was just for me today. Thank you guys. So check out Church on the Run on our website. We're at mylan.org. And we believe that each day it will be a word in due season for you. Be blessed. We love you. Here's the way you choose the blessings of God. The Bible says don't lean on your own understanding. That's one of the, the things he said to do. Now some people think of God's word as a suggestion, but since he's my God, he's not the God or a God, he's my God. Yeah. I think when he tells me something, it's a commandment. Yeah, I receive it as the information I need, mm -hmm. and I know he loves me, I know he's good, I know he wants to bless me. I know he wants to make my life better. If he tells me not to do something, I've learned the hard way that I'll have a better life if I don't do that. It's not so I'll miss the party. It's so that I'll get to go to the party. Amen. Now he knows the difference between the blessings and the curses. Some people teach, you know, well, you never know what God's gonna do. He might make you sick. 
tomorrow, the next day, he might make you poor and all kind of horrible things. But I just want to remind you, that's not what the Bible says. God, good, devil, bad. Let's get this settled right up front, right up here and now. Whatever, if something good's going on in your life, that's God. The Bible says all good things come from above. God's been so good to me. If I could tell you where he brought me from, and I'm going to in the next year, I'm going to go through my life and I'm going to tell you the good, bad, and ugly. I'm going to testify to you and I ain't going to withhold. I'm not going to just tell you the sweet things God did after he saved me. I'm going to tell you the dumb stuff I did before he saved me so you'll know why the devil got such a good shot at me. Because I want you to see what happened after I got on my knees and humbled myself and started trusting God. There isn't anybody on earth that wouldn't want God to do that for them. It's amazing. So if something good's going on in your life, that's God. If it's not, John 10, 10, Jesus said this. There's a thief that comes to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that you would have life and life more abundantly, more of the good life. Mm -hmm. That's the reason Jesus left heaven and came down here to suffer for you, to die for you, to live for you, to teach you how to live. He did it. He told us how to do it and then, and then did it right in front of us to give us an example, show us how. He went to hell for us so we wouldn't have to go. He conquered death, hell, and the grave, whooped the devil, we call it in Texas, and rose again and is seated at the right hand of the Father, the place of all authority. And then he told me and you, if you accept him, the Bible says he comes by his spirit and actually lives not in the general vicinity of where you are. The Bible says that your body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the one that has all the power who raised Jesus from the dead comes to live in Christians. Yeah. Wow. The one who can solve every problem, the one who can empower you to know and do what's best in his sight yes. and to protect you from the enemy. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Let me remind you what Jeremiah 29, 11 says. God said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Their plans to prosper you, not to harm you, and to give you a hope and a future. God never forgets his plan for your life. No matter what's going on in your life, it may look like, well, it's not working real good. Remember, God doesn't change. Maybe me and you need to. Amen. If we want to get that plan, and I do, man, oh my goodness, God wants to prosper me, I need to get a hold of that plan. God wants to give me a future full of hope and, and plans that are awesome and good. Yep, that's good. I remember when he brought Christy into my life. Trust me, that was a good plan. <laughs> Glory to God. Anyway, I want to share with you Psalm 23 and... Everybody knows that the Lord, yeah, the Lord is my shepherd. You probably could say it right with me. I shall not want. I don't know if you've ever watched a shepherd take care of sheep, but you know, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. The ones who really know God's word, they know the voice of God. He takes good care of them. They don't ever want for anything. He makes me to lie down in the green pastures. If you're a sheep, that's where the good food is. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. That's your mind, your will, and your emotion. Mm -hmm. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. No evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they cover me. Yeah. That's the word, the rod, the word of God. The staff is the Holy Spirit of God. The Comforter, he'll restore your soul. He'll refresh you. He'll renew you. You hang out with God and rest in him. Man, I'll be 73 in a couple of months, and my youth is renewed. That's right. Praise God. That's one of the things he does for me. I have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. If you live long enough, everybody does. You get to the hospital, doctors give you a bad report. You can either believe that or you can believe what God said. By his stripes, I was healed. 
He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies and anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Hey man, I believe that. I say that all the time. Goodness and mercy are following me around, praise God. And you know, David says on that in Psalm 17, he says, God sends blessings of good things to meet me. So God's goodness goes before me. But then here he says, and surely goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. So that means God's goodness goes before us and it follows us. So we are surrounded with the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a good thing. He ends up by saying, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord or the presence of God forever. Mm-hmm. Now, let me, let me say this because we're out of time for today. We've had a whole lot of fun studying the word. Some of you are facing situations. When Israel was afraid, David remembered how the spirit of the Lord had come upon him to deal with the lion and the bear. Mm-hmm. So Goliath didn't look that big to David. He believed, David believed that the Lord was his shepherd. Here's what's important today. What do you believe? Do you have a shepherd looking out for you? Is Jesus your king and your master and your savior? If not, it's really easy. It's so easy to fix that. All you have to do is believe that Jesus is the son of God and tell somebody that he is your Lord and you will be saved. And that's what we're believing for. We're believing for getting a letter or an email or something from you, letting us know the decision you've made so that we can join our faith with you and believe God for the best life on the earth for you. Goliath is a big guy. He was a, he was a problem for a lot of people. But remember, if you live by faith, you don't live in fear. You got nothing to fear because Jesus is Lord. Satan is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. It's very important that you understand, if you don't really trust God, you're gonna draw back in fear when it's really important. If you don't really, really have faith in God, if you don't believe he's honest, and that's what faith is, believing that God has integrity and that his word, the Bible, is the truth. You'll give him your problems but you won't give him your life unless you trust him. Mm-hmm. And, and if you only give him what you don't want and what you're ashamed of and what you're failing at, he'll work on that. But if you want to have the best life on the planet, you got to give him your whole life. As we wrap up today's broadcast, I just want to reiterate to you, the Lord is good. Yeah. And you can trust him. I have spent the last 37 years trying to find out how to get closer and, and what his word says. I remember the day God called me to teach his word. He referred to me in my heart as a student teacher. He told me, I'm gonna ask you to now start teaching what you know about me, but I also want you to learn what you don't know. So now I'm a 72 year old student teacher and always will be having a good time sharing that information. The Lord really is my shepherd. It's not just something that I quote out of the Bible. And by the way, I don't want for anything. God takes good care of me. He is so good to me. I I believe constantly, even when hard stuff's going on, I expect to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I just want to testify. He's done that for me so many times. I expect it every time. I don't deserve it. I hadn't earned it, but God is good. good. He's holy. He's merciful and kind. He's been so patient with me when everybody else gave up on me. God reached down in a really dark place. Psalm 103 calls it a pit Mm. and lifted me out of there. I want to lead you in a confession because I believe this will change your life if you've never spoken God's word over your life. If you're born again, or if you're getting ready to, say this with me. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the city. And I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in the field. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the head and not the tail. My future is bright. My future is bright. Because God is good. Because God is good. And his plan for me is awesome. And his plan for me is awesome. 
For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. And I'm going to leave you with one last scripture because this is my favorite all the time. People used to come to me and say, hey, what's your favorite scripture? And I thought, dude, how could I say that? I like all of them. Are you kidding? <laughs> but I think in the last few years, I found this one in Psalm 34. That just, I just, it's like headlines to me every time I see it. It says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That's why I'm doing this TV show. Amen. I want you to get a taste. I want you to see for yourself mm -hmm. how good the Lord is. And then he goes on to say, and blessed is the man who trusts in him. Amen. And you know, I, I decided to trust him and I'm a blessed man. And I can tell you unequivocally, he will bless you if you put your trust in the Lord. God bless you, man. We'll be praying for you. See you next week. Tell your friends to join us here on On the Road to Fear. Well, didn't you enjoy that teaching from Mylon today? Well, we've got a whole series for you titled, Enjoying the Goodness of God. And if you'd like to check that out, you can go to our website at mylon.org and just be encouraged today that God is a good God. He loves you. He's not out to get you. He's out to bless you. And if this program has been a blessing to you today, would you consider helping us help others? You simply go to our website at mylon.org, click on Team Mylon to sign up. And together, we will take the good news of the gospel to the nations that Jesus loves them. And we love you too. God bless you.